everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Shawnee and we are Glitzy Stitches Home DIY. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Today we're going to be participating in the first Friday and it's hosted by my friend Lisa of Our Gray House. It's also hosted by my friend Sarah of B DIY and our guest host today is my dear friend Tammy of Happiness Created. I'll have each of their channel links in my description box below as well as a link to the playlist. It's going to be a good one guys. Check it out. Okay and for DIY number one today. Now I drew inspiration kind of this picture off from this little picture at Magnolia Market. Now I want to go ahead and I want to recreate this with my flair to it and this was $198 on their website. I think it's beautiful and I think it'll be quite simple to recreate with our flair. Okay so what we're going to do first is I have this beautiful Easter sign that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. This is one of my favorite signs this year guys. You really don't need to do anything to this but I actually need this frame to do our project. So what I'm going to do is we are going to go ahead and we're going to heat the center part of this so it will lift right up after the hot glue is loosened. I have the beautiful sign removed. I'm going to set that aside for a future project. This paper from the back, but I wanted to do that anyway. And we'll just go over what's on the sides, trying to not hit the darker wood. But if we do, that's not going to be a problem. I'm going to be using my go-to chalk paint, guys. This is the Nimbus by Waverly. This is fantastic. It appears to be almost a gray, but it lays as a white with just like a gray undertone, guys. I absolutely, it's my go-to. It's my new go-to. I use this more than I use the white. So, we have our Nimbus on. I did do two coats. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to dry brush some cashew on noticing that the back of the mesh here, it actually matches the frame pretty well, pretty good, the backing. So I'm going to go ahead and try to match my frame and my backing. All right, I'm going to print those photos so we have a comparison. On the bottom. And these brushes I'm using, guys, they are awesome. I purchased these at Five Below, and they have been some of the best brushes I've ever used. Super durable. All right, guys, there we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry just as it is, and we'll be right back. I have this little piece of paper that I received, I received, I purchased from a paper pack at Dollar Tree. Now, I want to decide which one. Now, this one is closer to our frame color. Absolutely. So, we're probably going to be using this one. I want to try this one because of the texture. Mm, no, mm -mm. I like this one right here, guys. So we're going to go ahead and use this. And again, this is from one of those paper packs from the Dollar Tree. Fantastic. The feel of this is so nice. And I'm going to do something you guys don't see me do often. I'm whipping out the glue stick, guys. I use this for my book art, which we'll go further into that in another video. But I like this. It works very, very well for my book art. We're going to go ahead and we're going to slather it. We're going to give it a good, good portion of this glue. I'm going to go ahead, center this right to our page. I'm just eyeballing, so I'm hoping that we're going to get this right. It looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now I'm just going to press. like so. All right. Now the next step. The tedious thing about this project, guys, I found is just the painting. That's it. Um, everything else is pretty easy. Now I have this lace 
that I purchased last year from the Dollar Tree, and it's like a coral color. I use it in a lot of DIYs um, pertaining to water, things like that. What we're going to do is I'm going to take just a wee bit of hot glue. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut these short, guys. We're going to cut these a little bit shorter than the paper itself because that's how they have it on the piece. I'm going to cut it just like that, center it, and we're going to put a couple of pieces, but I'm going to measure them just the good old-fashioned school way. This is how I used to do it in school. We're just going to measure it just like that. See how many pieces we need. We're probably not going to need too many. Let's see. There's one, two pieces on this, and that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tack this with hot glue. Okay, now I don't really want to like just bombard this with hot glue because it'll show through, right? So I'm going to just go a little bit. I'm going to make sure my tip is clean. I'm going to go a little bit here, a wee bit. wee wee bit. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay it down first on the one side before I place it on the other. Perfect. There we go, guys. I think this turned out really, really cool. Love these chain links. And I thought, hmm, we can recreate these. Now, these chain links on their website are $94. Let me show you our twist on it. So, I made these links with a Dollar Tree sponge roller and some masking tape. So I wanted to show you how I'm doing this. So I took the Dollar Tree roller apart. Okay, this is the same thing I use for my gnome arms. Okay, the same roller. Just gonna make sure that it's through there. Oh, I just bend it just like so. But I have to put it, of course, through the link first. And we're just gonna make the link. Now I'm going to put some hot glue at the end of this. And yes, hot glue tends to melt this styrofoam, but it gives it just enough hold so we can get our masking tape started. You don't even have to worry about the shape to begin this. Just like so. And I just let it set for a minute. This is a bit tedious. I was like, oh no, they're going to be round and not oval. But you're just going to run your masking tape around your styrofoam, pulling very tightly. Very, very tight. This masking tape gives these links texture. And I cannot wait to paint these and see how they turn out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish wrapping this and we'll be right back. And we're going to start painting these with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Elephant. Now I have my... Elephant Chalk Paint by Waverly. The reason I'm not spray painting this, it's 22 degrees outside. We just came out of a real deep freeze of minus four here in Michigan. And I'm not going to go outside in the snow and spray paint it. <laughs> so I guess I should get me one of those portable paint tents. That would be awesome. But right now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to brush this on and I think it'll work just fine. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit. I'm not real sure how I'm going to go about this. I'm tapping it on, guys. That's how I'm going to go about it. This is Silver Lining. Yes, yeah, Silver Lining. It's a chalk paint by Waverly. Loving that farmhouse rustic look. Okay, guys, we'll be right back with our final reveal. Okay, friends, and there's our inspiration picture from Magnolia. And there's our inspiration piece. And let's get this made. Okay, guys, and here we go. This is an egg-shaped wreath form that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. And I love it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap this in some burlap ribbon that I purchased at Dollar General. Okay, we're just going to start on a bracket, take some hot glue, like so. You'll want your finger protectors and or your spatula, just like this. I think this wreath is absolutely beautiful, 
and wait till you see what we use for the top. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead. You know the routine. If you've been with me for a minute, I'm going to wrap this around about a quarter inch remaining, maybe a little more than that. Every so often, I'm going to dot some hot glue and we'll call it a wrapped wreath form. So we're going to go ahead, grab our hot glue. Now, I say it every time I make a wreath, guys, but I'm going to remind you that if you are going to have this out in the elements at all, if this will be on a door where the sun's going to hit and or extreme cold, you absolutely want to have a backup glue for these wreaths. Use fabric fusion and hot glue. So I'm going to start down here. Now I have these wispy things. So these are from the Dollar Tree. And I don't even know if I want to use these. We might stick these in as an afterthought. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead. We're going to put, I'm going to start pulling these off. And we're going to put these on our wreath. Cutting some off. And we're going to put that stem up like so. We're going to make sure that stem is not being shown. Okay, just like that. All right. I do believe I may want to start at the top of the wreath to make sure we get that covered. Do we want to do that? No. We're going to go ahead and start at the bottom, guys. We're going to add some fabric glue. All right. We're going to come right back, and we're going to back that up on both sides with our hot glue. I'm going to press this. You want good, good seal on this guys so this doesn't go anywhere and I'm going to keep using this same floral these pretty little yellow flowers on this piece right up our wreath and I always try them first just like so let me go ahead we can move them around. We can do anything we want with these. But we want these yellow flowers as our base. I'm going to spot check some greenery for us here. And then we're going to place the rest of our florals after we place our greenery. So I have one of our large spring florals here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down to the base. We're going to glue this right in that greenery. Oh, I love it. Okay. Absolutely adore that. Again, on this side, we're going to take it down even more. Fabric fusion. A little bit of hot glue. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh, I love this. Oh, yeah. There we go. So pretty. I had a pack of the hearts from the Dollar Tree. I simply took the wire, unwound it. It came right apart, and I put some in the center for our bunny ears. Now, we need to place our bunny ears on top of our wreath. Okay, so how I'm going to do that, guys, is I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use our ears might be a bit crooked. We're going to go ahead and we're going to attach these to the back. You can use, that's what I was going to tell you guys, is you can use zip ties to apply these flowers as well. Be sure to go check out Lisa, Sarah, and Tammy's channels. I have their links in my description box below as well as a link to the playlist. Guys, check it out for so much fun and inspiration. And if you like what you've seen today, go ahead and give me a great big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell next to your subscription and you'll be notified each time I upload new video. I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook at Glitzy Stitches Home DIY. If you enjoyed today's video, 
here's something else you may like.